So let's go ahead and get started here. We want to review some of the updated interface changes. We want to talk about we've added a new archiving folder and then the main topic of managing and adding staging folders. So the new interface is a, a little bit more streamlined. We've removed the far left column here for the, uh, the models drawings. There was really no use for it for most people when they're batch processing their ISOs. And so now you've basically got a list of ISOs you want to work on and a list of ISOs that are completed. So a little bit uh, more streamlined on that scenario there. And then we've also moved the PDF functionality up to the top here. So we had some of it up below, or up top, and then some down below before. All of that has now been moved up top, and uh, it's a little bit more concise area to work with there. So this is what the default workflow will uh, look like for most of you before you start adding your staging views. Uh, if we get into what it looks like with the stage views, you can see here we have four new buttons to basically cycle through each stage and then view the drawings that are in each stage as we look at those. The next step is talking about our new archive feature. So we've been uh, needing to add the ability in to basically archive all of your ISOs before we start manipulating them in the work in progress folders. And so with this option turned on, all of your ISOs will uh, basically go into a subfolder under this main folder called archive and then a date and timestamp. So as we start manipulating these and we bring them into the workflow stages, uh, these new folders will be created on the fly and your ISOs will be dropped in there. Now let's talk a little bit about the workflow here of the staging ISOs. So there's a couple uh, areas that you can work with to maximize your efficiencies with ISO works on how to track where your ISOs come and go. The old legacy style would just be the last two where we've got step four and step five of work in progress in the completed or uh, as many people call it, just the quality control in the issued stage. But some of our clients needed additional stages on top of that. So we've added in three more stages up front, which allow you the ability to post process and work with your files in earlier stages and give you more steps to basically track your workflow process inside of the software itself. So basically we've set up a, an arbitrary checker stage, a shop stage, a cleanup stage, and then we've renamed the work in progress and completed to QC and issued. So this will be our basic workflow that we're gonna be going through today and uh, talking a little bit about that. So let's jump over to plant and take a look at what we have here. All right, so if we, uh, if we look here, we've got our standard workflow and basically we open up the software. You'll notice a, a new archive area down here, but we've got our work in progress and completed folders at this location. When the archiving is turned on, you do need to fill out this path right here so that we know where to put our archive files. Now, if you don't wanna use the archive, simply turn it off and that feature will not be prompting you to uh, fill out the archive location. So if you notice here, we've got uh, just again, our standard work in progress and completed to add the additional workflow stages. You're gonna go into our settings dialog here. And inside of our settings dialog, we're gonna go ahead and add in the name of our workflows. These names can be whatever workflows you want to work with. You also do not have to have all of these workflows in place. So stage four and five are mandatory. Uh, these two are basically your work in progress and completed. These are the, the old styles that are the old for folders that you're accustomed to. The additional three at the top are entirely optional. So if you'd like to utilize those, go ahead and fill them out and fill out one, two or three. Uh, it doesn't matter. However many you add, we'll just manipulate the, uh, the software will update to, to work with those. I also do have our BOM and weld control turned on so that we can take advantage of this BOM weld list tab here. Uh, if you're not used to using that, we've done a previous webinar on it that you can go back and take a look at some previous information. Uh, but this will be turned on as we're walking through here. So you'll notice a couple more messages pop up if you're not accustomed to that. So as soon as I hit okay, you'll notice that we now have our new folders working with here. So these folders were already previously created and pathed. So my, my config file remembered that I had had these in there previously. And so um, 
this is a step that you will need to fill out if you decide to use these staging folders is just make sure you have a path for each one of these guys to a point to. And you'll also notice that we did rename the work in progress and completed to their new label names. So all of these label names over here have been updated to match our current settings. So let's go ahead and jump into isometric batch processing and take a look at running an ISO here. So we're going to go ahead and just do an ISO batch on these files. And we're just going to isolate this down to a couple of the, uh, the 1100 ISOs here. And let's go ahead and get rid of those. Now it takes a couple of seconds here to run the ISOs, but once they are finished, ISOWorks will get us a status report based on the isogen information that comes back uh, from each individual ISO. And now you can see here Isogen reported back that we had one successful line and a couple failed lines. Uh, but looking at the actual drawings themselves, I don't see any failed lines in this. And Isogen tends to do that sometimes when it, uh, for whatever reason, it thinks a line fails. And so it puts it into the failed uh, section of their report. If we expand this out, we'll kind of show you what we're reading and basing it off of. Uh, basically, Isogen is saying, hey, we completed one successfully and nine uh, failed. But as you can see, none of these actually failed. So we're just going to keep moving on and ignore that false error. Now, this is the point in which when we select all of these ISOs and move it into our staging folders, uh, this is the, the point in time where we essentially are going to archive them at the same time. So we're going to say, let's go ahead and move these into our first staging. And you can see here as I'm hovering over it, the tooltips is telling me the folder that they're going to go into. And it's going through and processing all of these with my BOM and weld list data and getting all that up to par, as well as archiving each and every one of these guys. So you can see here we've successfully moved them as well as created all of the files necessary. So let's go ahead and close that out and move on to the post-processing section here. And now that we have our ISOs in the post-processing section with our stages turned on, you can see the different stage buttons up here. And so stage one is just pointing to the checker location. Stage two is pointing to shop. Stage three is cleanup. And then finally, stage four is our old work in progress or the renamed QC folder. And then finally, stage five is just always going to be our issued or completed folder over here. Whatever folder is highlighted and active in this location is going to be the active folder to work with the BOM weld list. So keep that in mind as you're uh, attempting to work with the weld list and BOM controls. Uh, make sure you have the active stage turned on. Now at this point, we can go ahead and post-process our files. Uh, you will notice we have reduced the number of post-processing capabilities. So now you basically have the ability to rename your ISO and update the attributes, or just simply update the attributes. And we'll walk through a couple of these scenarios as we go through the process here. The, uh, the first stage, though, let's just simply uh, show off one of our new features is just being able to move these from one stage to another. So if your, uh, your workflow is all external, maybe the checker stage is basically, all right, let's identify which lines need to be uh, go to the shop right away, which lines need to be stress analyzed or anything like that. Uh, so once they've all been accepted, you can just simply move these to the next folder or post-process them. And right now, we're just going to post-process by moving them from one folder to the next. Now, when we do move them, we're also updating any of the BOM and weld list information. So if people are accustomed to using the old style of doing this all through the Excel files, where you update your BOM or weld list with Excel, we will also update the ISOs as we go through this process. So keep that in mind when you're using the, uh, the move forward buttons. We can also move these guys backwards. So once I get into a, a stage further on down the road, you'll notice that the uh, this option has been turned on to move them back. So if an ISO really needs to go back a stage, you can also just select that ISO and bring it back one level. The next step of this would be simply to, OK, let's replace all the attributes, or let's rename the ISOs and replace all the attributes. We'll just go through the first option here of just replacing attributes. This is the most basic item right there. And what we're doing is we're looking at every line of the spreadsheet, so our, expel, uh, our line list that we set up inside the ISOWorks setup tab. And we're looking at every single line, seeing if we can find a match between the, the ISO name itself as well as the line number. 
And you can see we rifled through those pretty quickly. And now that we've gone through that, we've essentially taken all of the attribute data from the spreadsheet and pushed it into the ISO itself. And once we've done that, you can see we no longer have any files in this folder to work with and manipulate. So let's go ahead and go to stage three. And again, this is our cleanup stage, so we can, uh, we can pretend that everything comes through perfect. Uh, we'll uh, just go ahead and move these guys to the next stage and let that process sink in. So again, it's just going through processing each and every file. And once that is finished, we will be into our stage four, our work in progress, final stage. And inside of there, we'll just go ahead and use the other rename option and go ahead and rename these ISOs as well. And we can see here, all of these were successful. So let's go ahead and close that guy and move on to the next and final stage. Now inside of stage four, Again, all of these stages work the same. You can move them forward, you can rename, you can replace attributes, do whatever you need to. And this time we're just gonna go ahead and rename all of these attributes. Everything's gone to the shop. We've updated the information for the BOM and weld lists. It's gone through uh, the cleanup stage and now we're in quality control. We think everything is good to go and it's ready to be issued. So we're gonna finally rename these into the final format that they need to be in so that the uh, our clients can receive them in their renamed format. And based on our settings, we're also updating all the continuations. So we've gone through and set up the ISOWorks line list to rename all of our ISOs from a, an old name to a new name. And when we do that, we also get into the habit of updating all of the continuations as well. So if we, uh, we take a look at this guy here, um, you can see we've got all these different ISOs. If we open this guy up, we have now post-processed this through all four stages and the continuations have been updated. The attributes have been updated. Go ahead and let this finish up. So here you can see all of our app updated attribute information. Got our nice ISO coming out here. Also updated all the continuations that this was pointing to. So it's letting us know that going to the, uh, the second sheet is no longer named uh, the old name. It is going to the new name of this ISO. And we have that updated and ready to go. So that's kind of the, the workflow here. You, again, you can use these stages as you see fit and uh, walk through them in any manner. And again, add and remove them as you need to. And then the final thing, we again, we've updated our PDF settings up here to just keep it all in line and together. So let's go ahead and just walk through this PDF portion here. And when you PDF these guys, I just do just a single PDF there. But what we do is we basically open up each ISO that needs to be printed and we print it using the current page setup inside of that folder. So if we take a look at this ISO here that we just printed, uh, again, this just looked inside of the, uh, the settings, found the current page setup related to a PDF and utilize that to print that out for us. All right, so I believe we wanted to really just cover over the, the new interface and we've talked about that. We've gone over the new archiving folder. Uh, let's go ahead and just open that up and show you what the new archiving folder looks like. So. Here you can see a list of all the archived folders that we have and then again they're just date and time stamped as we uh, walk through this process here. And then finally what the, uh, the workflow stages look like. So again stage one, two, three, and four and you set all of these up inside of our settings over here. As we have our uh, settings updated and added in there, uh, these new ones will come into play. We go ahead and remove one out. Let's go ahead and say we don't want the shop stage. We're just gonna go from checker to cleanup to QC. And let's go ahead and hit okay there. So here you can see that we're working now with just stage one, three, and four. And so as you, uh, you remove a stage, that stage is no longer gonna be post-processed and work with in that, uh, that same manner there. So let's go ahead and jump back over and see if we have any uh, questions. Any uh, questions, Joe? Perfect. Right. Thanks, Matt. Uh, so we got a couple that came through, and you know, for anybody that uh, has questions now, feel free to just submit them using that questions tab below. Uh, we'll start uh, with this one. I think you addressed it uh, towards the beginning, but 
Um, is it a requirement to use the staging folders? Oh, yeah, good question. No, it, it is not. So as you uh, first start off with the software, the latest update, the staging folders are turned off and you can keep working that way until you're ready to add the new folders in. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we've got kind of a two-part question here. Uh, when you use the, the move back option, do you lose any information that may have been added in that stage? And then are some of these, or actually, we'll, we'll just keep it at that for now. Uh, no, good question. So when you move them back, all the, we're basically just grabbing the ISO and any report files that are associated with it and just dropping them back one folder in that process. So if you have renamed them already, the new, the renamed version of that ISO will stay renamed. All the attributes will still be updated. So we don't undo any of the post-processing that has happened on the file. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. Uh, another one here. Can, uh, can the archive be turned on and off at any time? Uh, yeah, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do that. Um, it, the, the only time we utilize the archiving is when you take it from the isogen created folder and put it into the first staging folder. So that's really the only time it's ever active in the first place. But if you need to turn it on and off, you can do that at any point. Awesome. Perfect. Got another one here. Um, so if you were to get a uh, failure while running, is the type of failure uh, going to be listed anywhere? Do you get any information on that? No, we don't go into any advanced uh, isogen settings on that part to actually tell you what's wrong with the ISO. So if it is a true ISO failure, uh, the same isogen uh, troubleshooting techniques would still apply. So you basically open up the ISO and see if by chance you get any error locations or if it tells you why it failed. Uh, a lot of times you can see the, the last item it processed and kind of go troubleshoot your model from there. There's no special reporting through ISOWorks for that. Awesome. We got a, another one that just came in. Uh, so it, can this process, can it be used for any type of drawings uh, that you use for border attributes? Um, or is it stri strictly ISOs, I'm assuming, that they're asking? Uh, yeah, no, the, uh, the workaround that some companies have used to update attributes instead of just uh, isogen files, they've been able to drop in maybe plant drawings and electrical drawings or civil structural drawings to where we update all the attributes on the title block. That still applies. You can still go through that process and uh, update them at any point in time with these staging folders. Perfect. I think we've got one more here. This is kind of the, the two-parter, but you know, again, if anybody still has any questions, keep submitting them. Uh, but are these settings, this is when you're talking about some of the settings earlier, um, are the settings controlled within the works plugin settings? And if you make any changes to them, do you have to close and reopen your palette? These settings are saved in the works settings palette in the, like the overall work settings. So if you do make any updates or changes, these are going to be saved out to your file that's uh, local to your machine. If you need to share those settings, you can always export them and share them with anybody else. The, the setting changes are live unless you were to go ahead and import them and export them. So if somebody goes over and needs to use your settings as well, they would have to import them. And once they're imported, they should come across directly without restarting. Okay. 